What's up, everyone, and welcome back to The Pulse. We have a special guest this week returning to discuss autism and gaming. Lucas Gates is going to share his expertise in community gaming, the benefits and opportunities, and how to access the gaming world even when you don't have a console, cell phone, or computer. Without further ado, let's get into it. So we just wanted to ask you today a little bit about the importance of community gaming. You've got um, not only a quite a reputation in the online gaming world and in sports in general, um, but can you tell us a little bit about your involvement with online gaming? Ah, thanks for asking, SF, and it's good to be back on the Pulse. It's very important, you know, when it's the online aspect, you know, someone could just go by a regular, like, uh, anonymous name. So let's say Joe Schmo 2022 or whatever. Yep. He could say whatever he wants, say whatever he wants, and he doesn't get um, doesn't get any sort of repercussions in the in the real world because no one knows who he really is. He or yeah. she is really is. So there are lots of different formats for gaming. Um, That's correct. Aaron was mentioning co-op gaming. I don't know what that is. Oh, co- cooperative gaming. That's what Okay. Co-op stands for. So basically, like for example, um, there's games that have two players playing at once, trying to achieve a certain, a certain goal objective. So let's say one person plays as long as another person. It's kind of it's kind of a two-player kind of kind of situation where you're trying to achieve the same goal by cooperating with each other. It's kind of cool if you think about it that way. Is that something that can be done online, or is that yes. uh, you know two people using the same console in the same room? Uh, both actually, uh, because with gaming nowadays being a sport, of course, with COVID, with the pandemic ongoing, a lot of a lot of people have been playing co- like all sorts of different formats from like from basically when you're talking about online, that could be cooperative online, it could be multiplayer online, it could be anything. That's how wide the the, the business is. It's in- absolutely wild. So, if you as a solo player want to play a solo game online but still be a part of that environment is that something that you can do yes um of course uh with the rise of being you know online video game streaming i would assume aaron would probably know this as well there's platforms such as twitch which is a live streaming platform where people play other like play online for other people's community enjoyment i do so myself um of course i could probably link it in the in the um, podcast description if anyone is interested um, checking it out. Um, I do a lot of more like PG kind of like want to do more for kids because I feel, you know, it's great to have an interaction, not feel judged or any of that kind of nature. It's just, we feel it's fun, engaging and keeping your mind open. Uh, I actually don't use Twitch myself, but mm-hmm. what, how Lucas described it is from what I understand the concept of it. Okay. So, so it, I think it's not that different from like YouTube streaming where Correct. you follow a channel and some people stream videos and other people they just watch and enjoy sort of thing. So same concept, Correct. it's just on gaming. Yeah, well, uh, YouTube gaming is very similar to Twitch. It's um, basically some people actually I know, uh, one pe- someone who I know is actually trying to get more involved with multi-streaming. So not just hosting on Twitch, for example, but also on YouTube gaming as well. So you have that multi-platform um connectivity you know that community a cohesion which i think is absolutely pretty cool it reaches a broader audience correct fabulous so like this podcast on um, whatever platform you guys are listening to so um yeah <laughs> the the big question here that i have for you is why is gaming important for autism why is it important for autism simple um it's another great it's a great tool to have especially with uh, like like of course during 2020 was the world we as we knew it came to a screeching halt a lot of people started playing video games at home and a lot of them started you know drumming up their in drumming up their uh their um viewer base on like streaming like twitch or youtube gaming for example they've done that but also they're becoming you know not so sheltered that's another thing I think is also important. Like mm. I know someone else who actually, who's one of our showcase streamers, but I do know that he show he talks about, you know, sometimes he brings up the fact that he is autistic as well. He is partially blind. I mean, he is a, he is a streamer. He does. He's totally cool about disclosing who he is. It's even, heck, even on these platforms, some of them actually say on a tag and I'm, I'm serious. They says autistic, autism, neurodivergent. Literally you can probe that in, on streams and i actually have done that and i think that's absolutely great news not to feel you know sheltered 
or uh, that kind of thing because sometimes people are just ignorant fortunately why is it important for people to even get involved in online games like why not just sit at home and play the games you want to play by yourself um simple you never know you might some um, interact with some folks you know someone says oh you did a great job buddy you know you're you're on your way you know it's that community aspect i think the gaming community as a whole we've really started to sort of imp- sort of realizing that hey we're all different and that's okay that's one thing i have realized in the last year or so especially with the rise of like online platforms and a lot of people moving over to these things like like heck i actually know like a lot of universities who already you know already have like crazy amounts of uh, inclusive like you all you all know about all these universities having these uh, inclusive kind of programs to set these kids up these students up for success when you look deeper these universities are breeding grounds for esports i know um one of our local colleges at one of our local universities university of british columbia they have a gargantuan esports scene huge really massive oh yeah Oh yeah, it's huge. And like I know my old alma mater, my my old my college I attended, they have an esports program. I know SF one another one, uh, Simon Fraser University hosts one. It's really starting to grow among the um, I would say the maybe late millennial Gen Z kind of crowd. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, it's good because now as as we're sort of realizing we're all different, that's okay. We're just who we are. I'd like to also add that I like that gaming has another way of the socialization aspect of things. Yes. Unfortunately, for some people on the autism spectrum, things like eye contact and such is difficult for them, or Mm -hmm. they might possibly might have anxiety in terms of talking to people. So with the being able to do like the cooperative games or multiplayer games where you can do like um, audio chat and such, Mm -hmm. it's a way of communicating and and talking with people and playing uh, without the face-to-face a- aspect of things. Absolutely, Aaron. That's a great point to bring up regarding um, these kind of gaming because um, um, a lot of these, a lot of gamers, uh, like our in our community, hypothetically, it's hard for them. You know, we're lucky that we we have that ability, but a lot of people don't have that ability, and I they understand it's hard for them to you know for the eyes because sometimes it drifts off in the space. I was once like that. You know, and I remember my folks saying this years ago, and I mean, I'm probably not the only one who's heard this when I, when he was, she was younger, but they used to tell me, um, and this is true. I'm, I know they totally apologize. They said, this is a total, we regret saying this. They said, you'll not make money playing video games back in the nineties. Well, <laughs> well, not so much. People anymore. do now. <laughs> Yeah, they do. So nowadays they said, why do you, you know, but I'm working on something with, with Neural Valley, which is my, um, which is my business of sorts that I'm trying to build up over time. So just bear with me, folks. It's, it's a long, it's been a long journey, but the journey is only just getting started. Lucas, um, what would you say is the biggest struggle for autistic individuals in gaming? You know what? That is a really good point, point. Um, and especially in esports. Um, I've been hearing this um, over the last couple of years that I've been developing NeuroValiant, uh, especially as as prior of being a po- host on this podcast, which I was gratefully honored to be such. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people started using autism as a slur. You know, that's just one thing that really bugged me. I really was just shocked and disgusted. I mean, this was before COVID. This was... I'd say 2018, 2019, right as the time I was getting this project underway, and um, they used to term use the term autist, like with a, instead of autism, it's autist with a T at the end. I was like, "What are you doing? You know, I mean, I'm a gamer too. That's not that's not polite. I can, I mean, I'm someone who is able to speak up. Not a lot of people can. So, I mean, it was like, hold your horses there. I mean, uh, I know there's some people on streams that still use the R word. Unfortunately, it's the heat of the moment. They apologize. They try not to use it again. I understand they make mistakes. We're only human. But, you know, as a way that we're moving forward, we can learn and learn and evolve. And that's that's a, that's something I totally agree with. I think, you know, we all we're only human. We're only we're all flawed. So got a room to grow. And do you think that those conflicts are easier to resolve because things are online? 
Uh, if you're if you're polite about it, absolutely. I mean, if as long as you're taking the high road and saying like, uh, for example, sometimes a couple of people who I watch on stream, they're saying like the, you know, the R word or autist, for example, I'm like, whoa, man, uh, you might want to be careful with the wording there. It's it's I don't want to be might be considered insensitive. They're saying like, oh, I didn't intend to do that. You know, you know, I'm being super polite about it, saying, whoa, there, you know, it's as long as you're taking the high road and being sort of like not taking the rage culture. You'll you'll always take you'll always look like a you always look like a hey thanks so much for the tip kind of thing. Aaron has a wedding story about online gaming. Aaron, I, I didn't set that up very well. Do you want to explain? There was this couple. I think it was in the states. They were on like the last steps of getting married, having their ceremony and such. I think in the article it quoted them as being like 99% ready to get married. And unfortunately, when the pandemic hit, it was forced them to cancel the wedding. As part of staying home order, as it was brought up earlier, they started getting into, in this case, it was Animal Crossing. And so for those who are not familiar with Animal Crossing, it's typically a one player. You have an island and it takes time to build and customize it, um, interacting with these characters slash villagers. And you can travel to another player's island, for example. So the couple, I'm going to say now husband and wife for clarification, each had their own islands and playing and they can travel to each other's islands. And at one point, the wife had traveled to the husband's island and he had set up this surprise wedding over Animal Crossing. Now, I can't remember if it was just with the other, if it was just the other villagers on that island or not, but I believe they also had some friends listening in on like an audio chat and they supposedly were on mute until the big reveal. So technically, in a way, they held a wedding on Animal Crossing. Obviously, it wasn't legally binding, but it was apparently a nice little surprise for the wife. Uh, I think I heard that story too, Aaron. I thought that was really cute because Animal Crossing, uh, the, I think that came yeah. out right right as the big pandemic got going, which I mean, I mean, I know the timing was um, a little awkward, but at the same time, it was pretty dang good luck that they launched right at that time. So yeah, um, I work at GameStop and I remember it came out, it would have been March. So it was just right around the time or just a smidge before the stay at home order was issued. That was pretty cute, though. So, um, you know, take you know when life gives you when life makes lemons, make lemonade. Make lemonade for your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had one more question, um, kind of along the lines of my last question. Do you think that there could be some unique challenges for individuals who are non-verbal in community gaming, and if oh. so, what might those be? You know, to be honest, Kayla, uh, I absolutely 100% agree that is a pretty difficult challenge. But you do know uh, we have ways in today's world, of course, you know, with the rise of technology and being in everyday life. So, for example, you could easily punch like a couple things into like your phone, for example, and still punch it and probably loop it through like audio chat and still be done. It's still possible if, you know, the setup is absolutely correct. Are you referring to something like uh, text to audio kind of stuff? Yeah, pretty much text audio. I know like a few other programs out there do use text audio and some, you know, some people who uh, you are on uh, like watching Twitch or YouTube chats, those guys don't have to speak into the um, speak into the computer. They can just type on their thing like on their keyboard. That's how they can interact. Okay, so it would just me mean needing a little bit of a different setup. Pretty much. I know some people who have all sorts of wild um, Twitch setups. I'm actually talking to you directly from where I stream my video games. In fact, um, I've got a couple of my consoles here. I've got my console. So I've got a Nintendo Switch uh, OLED. I've got a PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X. So if I wanted to, let's say, play all the new modern kind of, you know, fendangled stuff, I have the ability to do such. So, I mean, it's not, it's, I mean, it's an expensive hobby. Don't get me wrong. Buying these new machines every like four or five years, it's not cheap. But if, but I mean, if you're keeping up with the Joneses and keeping sort of well in at things, you should be okay. So if you're not keeping up with the Joneses because you're not in that kind of financial position, is this not an option for you? A lot of people use PC gaming as well. So like, for example, 
some people have there's a whole a different kind of clientele with gaming it's not just console gaming it's the pc gaming so basically mm -hmm. uh when it comes to uh pc gaming computer gaming so yeah. they basically rig their machines out uh like they fix up the motherboard you know fix up ram gpu cpu mm -hmm. uh monitors the whole nine yards it, i mean i personally am flabbergasted at how some of these people can make these rigs it's and it's not expensive to you know build a pc from scratch you just have to know the know-how and you're set to go Heck, I even have a PC, a gaming rig, uh, some um, around somewhere else in my house that I can use if I want to. But you can also get like keyboards or mice yeah. uh, customized because some people, uh, their body may function differently or they have their own challenges. Oh, so uh, if you know yeah. where to go, you can probably find a piece of tech that should be able to work for you, I suppose. Yeah, and you know what? I totally forgot to bring up the fact that, um, in particular, uh, I can give a total sh uh, kudos to Microsoft. Uh, they've recently, um, they've recently, ro they're rolling out adaptive controllers. Um, if I could probably add this into the link uh, of this podcast description, I'll forward it over. I think it absolutely for those who are listening here who will want to see if they think that the regular standard, you know, Xbox controller is not for them and it's a little odd, a little complicated. Um, this option might be for you and because it's a you can customize it, you can figure out okay, uh, so you can figure out what layout works best for you maybe you have a little bit of mobility issue in one of your hands maybe you can use another use some ways to maybe work with your feet you know there's a lot of ways that they've been really trying to make this more inclusive and believe it or not i've seen a lot of gaming companies are stepping up to the plate and saying hmm, maybe it's maybe it is a good thing to start looking out for those um gamers with some little extra needs mm -hmm. the the main point that i, I want to make sure we get to um starts with if you don't have access to any gaming, a computer, anything. Where can you go to play games? Cell phones, mobile phones. Okay, if you don't have well, anything, you've got nothing. You don't not have anything. a phone, you don't have a computer, you don't have friends with video cameras or, or sorry, video consoles. Is there anywhere else people can go to play video games? Thank you for bringing that point up because there are gaming social clubs. There's probably going to be a gaming club near you. So like, for example, let's say... Um, at um, at the Pacific Autism Family Network, I'm happy to report that um, that as a partnership with NeuroValiant, we have a program called Connections Valiant, which is a teen and adult social program for ages 15 up. Uh, if you don't have a console, don't worry because we already provide it for you. So we have a Switch, Xbox, PlayStation. If you don't have those consoles, don't worry. You can come have fun, meet some new people, you know, make some new friends. Hey, you never know. You might go out to a bar or some, like a restaurant or something like that. Um, and maybe if you want to sort of meet up, say, hey, you know, hey, Johnny, you know, I'll, we'll exchange phone numbers. Maybe we'll meet up and something like that. Because a lot of people in our gaming community have a lot of similar interests. So it's more like that getting to know other people as well. Are there any Generally, arcades? Ah, uh, yes. Good old-fashioned arcades. Um, they're still around, I would assume, like those old-fashioned coin-op arcades. I Personally, I you can always look them around. There are still people who are still into that nostalgia factor. And honestly, I don't blame them. They're so much fun, you know. Things you can always look around. You never know. You might find them somewhere where they have like those, like you put like the quarter and stuff in, do a couple rounds of maybe like um like pinball or some other stuff. I, they're still around. It's not it might not seem as popular as it was like 20, 30 years ago, but it's still there. There is one somewhere in Metro Town Mall, and there is one out in New West. Are you referring to the TGS, the gaming stadium? Because I know um, those guys are another great, re um, another great um, place. I was thinking actually. East Spot. I was thinking East Spot off of. Canada. Okay, I'm, I'm, that's why um, gaming so varies. You know, you can look wherever you are. You know, say like okay, got like on Google for example, just say like searching. You know, coin op arcades, so and so city or town. You never know. Your town might ha still have one around. You know, there's people, there's still nerds out there who still love this kind of culture. It's it's not going to die anytime soon. That brings us to the very final point. What social opportunities or experiences are possible through gaming? Kayla, let's start with you. Uh, well, I personally know a couple, a couple of couples, <laughs> two couples who met online. I think both of them were through World of Warcraft. They met online through World of Warcraft and ended up getting married, meeting up in person and getting married. 
That's awesome. It's it's surprisingly that is that does happen. You know, I know a lot of uh, I know there's a huge there's tons of people who meet for these kind of funny situations. You know, um, a lot of gaming culture happens to go through cosplay as well. There, that's something I'm totally out of the loop personally. Whenever you have a particular big game, there's bound to be a huge following. Smash Brothers has a following. Pokemon still has like a major following. Um, Overwatch, Battlefield. Uh, so yeah, you know what? When you're in one group, you pretty you pretty much when you can talk to other people uh, that like a similar game, you know, you can really boom hit it off. Yep. Have you ever seen a great deal of bullying that you found to be a problem? Um, when it comes to bullying online, uh, it's kind of you know even though we are getting better society with it, some people you know what. There's always going to be bound to be people who are just straight up ignorant, unfortunately. You know, that's just who we are. Unfortunately, everyone, again, like I said, is horribly flawed as a society is large. So people just might just be ignorant. They just don't want to learn. They're stubborn. And people still just don't get it, you know. But the good thing, though, about, like, again, online streams, they have the ability to time these people out if they're misbehaving or they're not following the rules. Because that's one thing that uh, streamers actually have the option to is add moderators to, like, these chats. And if they're acting unruly, boom, either temporarily, you know, um, temporarily timed out or or banned, gone. Um, and even people on stream say, like, okay, these are the rules I have to set. Uh, some people even say, like, yes, I'm autistic. You can ask me any questions, you know. Thank you, Luke. Um, really appreciate you coming on to the show today. I would love to have you back because I think this is a good on ongoing discussion. So we might um, in the future like to have you come back for for another part, another edition. Um, and before then, if we get a chance to talk to you on the show, that'd be great, too. Uh, really Thanks. nice to have you back. So nice chatting with you today. And As always. That does it for today's episode. What are some of your favorite games and some of your favorite methods of gameplay? Do you know where to find your local gaming resources? As always, if you have ideas or topics that you'd like us to discuss, or if you want to be a guest on the show, send an email to voa at pacificautismfamily.com. We look forward to more of your great questions. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you soon.